So my name is Sorush Mashal, and this talk is gonna be about emotion AI uh, for, for video game industry uh, and what it means for us from a vision perspective, all right? So I'm gonna start with this video that was pretty inspiring for me. It's from the movie Hair, uh, which you might know. And there, is, there was this scene that uh, Joachim Phoenix is playing video games. So without further ado, let's go and watch it. Do you know how to get out of here? I need to find my ship to get off this planet. Fuck you, shithead, fuckface, fuckhead. Okay, but do you know how to get out of here? Fuck you, shithead, fuckface. Get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> I think it's a test. Fuck you. Fuck you. Well, fuck you, little shit. <laughs> Follow me, fuckhead. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, that, that scene was pretty inspiring for me because this showed a glimpse into the possible future of video games and how, how they can be. So what we can understand is that future is whatever it is, it's going to be really immersive. And we are going to have this degree of immersion that we can just sit on the couch, just like as I am sitting here today, and simply just talk and interact as naturally as possible. But let's break it into the components that has built this experience, all right? So to have that level of immersion, you really need to have this emotional interaction with the characters inside the game, right? Well, you saw this, uh, well, this not really polite the person. <laughs> whom he was talking to and there was there was this conversation going on it was surely pretty emotional right so you could see this interaction right but i really want to focus on it because in video game industry i mean what made video game industry so special and what made it so special that it could take over cinema hollywood and everything that it contains in the matter of like a decade or two right uh it was the interaction because if you want to just show something to people, you know, you would just go watch movies. There is this communication. It can be emotional. You can cry and watch movies, but it's not going to be, it's not going to be that like that interactive, but at least to a great extent, video games have that interaction, but still what's missing about them at the moment, is that still when it comes to emotional aspect, there is still just communication and not that interactive. So the question is, how, how can we do that? How can we achieve that level of interaction? And that uh, leads us to the input and output. So we need to find a way to, to, like, to have an input of emotions to the video game so that video games can understand the players states, emotional states. And if they can do that, of course, they can use this information to build that, that immersion that we were looking after, right? So let's take a look at video game industry and some of the, some of the games that at least touched me greatly and see what were, like, what were so special about them. I would say all of them have one thing in common. And it's that they all touched me. They all touched me to my core. And this emotional bound that I created with each one of those characters, each one of those journeys, that has made those games the masterpieces that we talk still to this day about, about them, right? For example, when you're playing Journey, you know that you have this like every time I was sliding down a sand dune, I knew that I, and I was there, there was a stranger and I was just interacting with it. I was sharing that emotional bond as well. So this, this is the key point about them. Or for example, when I was playing that Dragon Cancer, after that game, I was so immersed in the story, I was so immersed in the experience that at least to some extent, I could say, now I have a better understanding of people 
who go through the cancer. Or when you are trying so hard to just pull out the master sword in Zelda after trying so long and collecting all the hearts, right? These are the moments that, well, one of them give you perspective, one of them gives you joy. Or the moments that made us cho choose. For example, when Joel had to choose uh, whether he has to save or well, let fireflies have a leak. So these are these games, these emotional key points, those are the ones that really connect to us. It's the same story with Metal Gear Solid and I don't know, Walking Dead and so on. Then you have to make a choice. You have to, you have to face this, face this fear and face like you, you, you can see all of those emotions coming inside you and you you're maybe like I was crying like seriously I was it was a game of thrones for me and you know that th that level that this you can only achieve it uh, by being able to tap into the player's emotions it was the same when uh, well King Varian was also sacrificed uh, so all of them all of these bring us to the value of emotion in our industry. And we really need to know that what makes us video game creators different from other branches of the entertain entertainment industry is that interaction. It's the ability to create that interaction. And we do already have the emotional communication perfected, but we, it's time to think about emotional interaction. All right. While playing video games, we all express a lot of emotions. Per perhaps that's one of the reasons that so many people like to watch streamers because while they are just playing, you can see them. They are just furious. They are angry. They are excited. They cry. You can see this whole range of emotions. That that that's exactly what makes them human and what connects you to them right so we need to we need to have this way to find and detect players emotion but how do we do that like when i'm talking about emotions uh what is this emotion it has a lot of different aspects so it has the visual aspect well, this is my face that you see but also it is my voice that you hear so for example if i would give this talk like hey, we are detecting players' emotions. You would be like, oh my God, that's so boring, right? But you would be surprised. Uh, I mean, if you are a 90s child like me and you used to just talk to your girlfriend over the phone for hours, <laughs> you know how it feels. You know the value of voice. So here in Othering, we found a way using artificial intelligence to tap into that potential. And be able to detect the emotions that are present in your voice, in your player's voice. So, so far, I talked about this vision, and I'm sure you're already pretty clear about it, but it's pretty important that it's not just a vision, it's a product that I'm also telling you about. And this product is called Entertain Play. Entertain play can help you uh, detect different emotions. So we have six emotion categories with uh, emotion dimensions that you can adjust to your needs indefinitely. It's really, really lightweight package, so you can run it on Raspberry Pi. Well, if you want to make a game for Raspberry Pi, who knows? Uh, well, up to mobile phones and, of course, consoles. And it's Work, it works in real time. So you have, you know, like, just by hearing me for half a second, you can surely and pretty, like, accurately can say if I'm, let's say, excited or sad or bored or any other emotion I'm experiencing. All right, so that's interesting play. Uh, let's dig deeper. Uh, this is available for Unity Game Engine as a plugin. So, uh, you like if you are a game developer, of course, the SDKs are also available, but this is perfected for Unity. 
But well, you have already seen Unreal 5 probably and just played with the early access. So uh, we also plan to have it for Unreal pretty soon, but just we are not announcing it officially yet. All right. Uh, so it works because it's a plugin. Uh, it works in a drag and drop form. So it's just like, it's as easy as that. I'm gonna elaborate on that a bit later. Uh, so you, you, you will see actually how it works. And as I already mentioned, it is multi-platform. So you have it available for Windows, for Mac OS, iOS, and Android. So no matter what is your platform, you can surely integrate it and build with it. Let's dig a little deeper into the features. Uh, so. Looking at what people want, we found expression is the most important thing. So we, we gathered a lot of audio, a lot of data, and we fed them to the computer, to our machine learning, created convolutional neural networks. And we are right now able to have this expression detection as accurate as possible. It means that you would know exactly the extent of expression of your players. In addition to that, of course, we do have the basic emotion models, which are angry, happy, bored, sad, excited, and neutral, uh, which you can use the values from, uh, from the plugin. And these are working on layers. So you would have you would have these detected for human voice, of course, because uh, it's important to know that other uh, factors in the environment are not affecting your, uh, well, your analysis, right? So we do have a voice activity de detection that is working below that. And it's also important that you would be sure that you are not biased. So you would, have, you would have to take into account the speaker attributes like the gender, perceived gender, age, and so on. Uh, and these are all available in the packages uh, that we offer. Uh, so well, let's get a bit more practical. Uh, I want to use one of the case studies uh, of the Simulation Crew. Simulation Crew is a VR company. Uh, they are a serious game company that are uh, in Netherlands. And uh, they are using Entertain Play for their virtual uh, reality character, Iva. Iva is a VR communication trainer. It means that they have this character that they trained. Uh, it, of course, has different uh, aspects, but like we provide them the technology to detect the emotion from the audio. There's, like, uh, of course, the whole uh, like dialogue technology and so on. And you can use them for different, uh, different cases and scenarios. So one of the cases I want to cover here is the case with Radboud UMC. That's a hospital, and they have a project called Patient Comfort Techniques. In this project, interns who want to go out and talk to people, talk to the patients over there, uh, we want to ensure that uh, they are trained well in as immersed as possible in the environment, not really theoretical, uh, before they go out and could have contact with real people. Uh, and those are real patients with real emotions whom you don't want to hurt, right? And you should be sure that you are well, well trained enough to be able to communicate with them, right? So for example, one of the cases is anger detection. Imagine like you are immersed in a scenario that, uh, well, somebody comes in, they're pretty angry. They're like, oh my God, I had this vaccine injections. My, my arm hurts a lot, what should I do? And in the VR, you would be able to uh, express yourself. So you would be like calm or let's say like you would mimic their emotions as well. And the character would then react properly. So this is, this is the level of emo immersion and the, the communication and the interaction I was referring to before. Uh, it is working on Oculus Rift, as you can see. So it is available on the latest VR technology on the market. And well, I already mentioned the IVA, and it is integrated into IVA, the, their VR communication trainer. So let's move on a little more into the technical details. Uh, I told you that it's going to be easy, and it's going to be just drag and drop. I didn't lie. 
uh, imagine that's it. Uh, this is Unity. You know how it looks, and you just create a new project as easy as that. And those are plugin files. So that's it. You just get the plugin files, drag and drop them into your asset folder, and you have the access to the uh, to the interactive play. How it works? As easy as that. You see, uh, you would just need to write intertain instance dot get whatever you want. Get angry, get happy, get expression, anything, get gender. Any value I already mentioned before, any of those features are available with like one line at your fingertips. And well, that's it. Then you can simply use these values that you receive in real time uh, from this plugin, from this plug, the AI plugin. And then based on those values in your update or like any other way you want to have uh, your program, uh, then trigger animations or trigger different game events or well, however you feel, like however it fits into your design. So here, for example, we had this case, we had this character Lily and Lily was also uh, triggering different animations uh, that would uh, trigger different animations based on your emotional input. Uh, so this input could uh, make her uh, sad. For example, if you would be really angry, she would just start cry or she would also get angry. Or if you would just like talk and be boring, she would be like, mm, you know, like that. And this, this, this is also a demo that shows that the potential for that interaction that of course we can have in this industry. Uh, there are like, I already covered countless examples, like, I don't know, going into the battle and giving a pep talk to your troops before the battle, or I don't know, having a chat to, to a merchant and trying to be friendly and get a discount. Seriously, these are like, the examples are as many as we have in real life interactions. So I can just continue for hours and hours. Uh, but in general, uh, that's as easy as that. That's it, AI is here. Speak, okay, so let's move on to another topic and that's playtesting. Well, there's a saying that if you don't like testing your video games, most likely your players won't like playing it either, right? And you must do it efficiently. All right, because, well, you know, in Germany, that's how we do it. <laughs> so let's take an example of Cyberpunk. I mean, everybody loved it. Everybody was waiting for it, right? And, uh, well, we saw what happened, right? This was, this was the image we had in mind. And we were like, oh, my God, this is going to be amazing. And then that's what we got. Uh, I mean, of course, uh, this is more of a Q&A issue. And this is like, these are the bugs that they couldn't get. And we, we already had amazing talks today that already covered this Q&A aspect very well. So I'm not going to touch on that. However, I'm going to touch on emotions. Well, because that broke my heart, really. Like, you know, when I was... Well, I, did, I couldn't buy any PS5, sadly. I'm not sure if you could, but I had to just use the PS4 version. And it wasn't as I expected, you imagine. Uh, so yeah, I was a bit heartbroken. Uh, but if they would have tested, we wouldn't have those issues. So it's like, it's not only about removing bugs, testing. So those are the first aspects. But then after Q&A, you would come to playtesting, which is about ensuring the expression, the correct expression, behavior, and engagement you want to have from the players, right? So if you are, if you're designing something and uh, you, you want to ensure that they are, they're, they're really like excited by these moments, and then you find them that they actually are frustrated, well, maybe there is something wrong in the design, right? Uh, so this this is the this is the value of playtesting I want to focus on here. So for that, we also have another product that I'm going to offer, and this product is called Entertain Observe. 
Intertent observe help you to see more, so you would have insights into the emotional feel emotions and feelings of your players. Because normally, if you want to do that, uh, well, you have to have somebody watch a uh, watch person just like do a play test thing. But it's like really hard to scale. And as I mentioned earlier, it's about efficiency. So you want to to be able to have as objective of a, of a view and perspective as possible. Uh, you want to have this, uh, you want to have it tested on a lot of people. And for that, well, if you don't want to use a lot of people to observe a lot of people, you have to use AI to help, help right? Get some help. So uh, it would, like this tool, Intertent Observe, also would help you to highlight the most excited moments. So uh, if they are, let's say, like if there is something happening in the game and you expect them to be excited, but then you find them that like they are like me, you know, then they are bored. Well, maybe you want to just go back and take a look at your design again. So, or the same, you know, if you find them that they are, as I said, uh, not, not the way you expect them to be based on your design. So it's all about this efficient workflow, this like the scrum uh, mentality that, you know, to just be able to get the, like get the things that don't work properly as soon as possible in your pipeline. And most importantly, it is as easy as just recording and having a microphone, which is prevalent, which is everywhere. Like you would have microphones on every laptop that they're playing already, right? So that's enough. So let's dig a little deeper into Intertain Observe and have a closer look. Uh, so for example, here in Eliza Destiny project, they were looking at the engagement and that's the value they want to see. So they want to see if based on the events in the game, the players would actually have the expressions they expect them to have. And using Insert and Observe, they could get a detailed report on every speech segment. And then they could look at it, and they could also like look at uh, every uh, pro band that was there. And then that's it. They, they would have a really better view of well, what did we do right, what did we do wrong. And it's also really easy accessible. So, uh, I'm going to, again, use another uh, example uh, of Playtest Cloud. Playtest Cloud is a playtesting company uh, based in Berlin, uh, Germany. And they are doing playtesting for mobiles. Uh, so they do have this big community uh, of different gamers, different age, different, uh, different uh, genders, everything. And uh, whenever you want to release a game, you just go to them. You're like, yeah, I want this game tested on the weekend. Uh, can you do that? And they just send it out, they do this testing, they get back to you. But uh, we want them to be more efficient, right? So we do, uh, well, I already covered, so that's this, uh, that's the platform, that's how it looks like. So you would see that there is a video recorded, uh, the players has to talk constantly, uh, they are being annotated, there is this automatic speech recognition, and what we added is this aspect. Right now, looking at, uh, looking at any session, any test session, they can easily identify the most important moments that happen there that, for example, imagine you are a play tester, uh, you, are, you are an observer, right? And you have to go through like 200 videos. You might want to watch them, but you want to really focus on some moments that you feel that these are important ones. So you don't want to watch the full 20 minutes in like, you know, with the same focus, let's say. So if you would have an AI right next to you <laughs> that would tell you, right, I already watched all of them. Apparently on these moments, on like minute four to five, everybody were really bored. Is it what you expect? And then you're like, well, no, okay. So it seems that something in the design is not right over there. So, uh, this, sorry, this, sorry. Yeah, we're over, we're time, over time, and would have okay. to move to the, to the QA, QA room. room. That's okay. Okay, okay, that's fine. 
Uh, then I will pack uh, pretty fast. Uh, so that comes in a web API as a JSON. Uh, you can have it on premise and cloud based, and it's as easy as that. And last but not least, I'll just finish off the feature. I started by the feature, I end by the feature. And I want you all to know that feature is your choice. So you are the ones who make the decision whether you want to have a feature that is void of emotions or with emotions.